Hello and welcome to the Whirly Black channel. Today we're going to be talking about balancing props. Now there are a lot of videos on YouTube about balancing props for your hexcopter and quadcopter and uh, they're all pretty good but I found these larger uh, carbon fibre one-piece hubless props have got their own particular problems and I thought I'd let you know how I solve those. Uh, I've got my own particular way of doing it. Um, I've just received several sets of these props RC timer 13 by five and a half props from direct from RC timer in Singapore um, and I use these on all my larger quads and hexcopters I've never had any problems with them. They're, they really are very, very good. Uh, these are thir I'll say 13 by 5.5. They're to go on a Taro 680. They're about the largest you can get on there, I think. Um, and uh, I thought I'd just explain the technique that I've developed for balancing these 100%. So, what are the problems? Well, if you look at this. Um, plastic prop. This is off a uh, Tarantula X6. These are moulded. Um, they're very flexible. Um, and I think as most people know who have been involved with this sport hobby that you need to balance your props so that you don't get vibrations um, which means your motors and bearings um, uh, don't vibrate. You don't get horrible sort of yellow jello effects um, on your video footage um, and the way you balance them is quite simple um, you put them in a prop balancer like one of these here um, put them in that way around and one side may just fall down which means this blade is heavier you take a bit of material off the underside with a bit of wet and dry something like that to lighten it up and it will go back to that position and I think most people take that as being balanced but even on these uh, these plastic props, that there's problems. So because it's got a hub, and because it's moulded, there's all sorts of part lines and and bits of um, sort of plastic that sit here, and also inconsistencies in the moulding itself. That one side may actually be having the other. So you find you put it in your prop balancer this way, and it falls down there, even though it's balanced perfectly this way, you put it that way and it just falls that way. And that's because this side is more heavy than that side and it tends to want to sit low. And there's various techniques that you can use to balance that out. Bits of CA glue and all sorts of things. Um, now you would think that these one piece carbon hubless props wouldn't have those issues because they don't actually have a prop. Uh, a hub. And to be honest in the smaller props I don't find this is a problem. They balance that way, again take a bit of material off one side or the other, it balances out beautifully. Um, but on the larger props, sort of 10 inches and up, these are 13 by 5.5. Um, you'll balance them that way, put them in the prop balancer and they'll do the same sort of thing, they'll move one way or the other. Not always but um, I found the majority, particularly um, 12 and 13 inch. And the problem comes, I believe, because the cord length of these props is quite large compared to something like this. So if you take a centre line down through here from, from the spindle where the, the motor spins round, where the prop is actually mounted, there's quite a big distance either side and it only takes a small difference in weight between this side and this side to cause it to actually rotate um, and that will cause vibration not as much as if you've got a big mismatch between the weights of these two but it does cause a vibration and I'm sort of pretty fastidious about um, balancing props um, I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't get them perfect it doesn't take very long once you've done one or two then you can actually do them pretty quickly and I'll show you the technique that I've developed for for balance for uh, fixing those balance problems. Um, for balancing, I use one of these. Um, I find this is the best sort of balancer. 
Um, I've had this one for a long time. I think I've probably got this from Banggood for about 10 or 12 pounds. Um, it allows you to fit up to about 13 inch prop in there without any problems at all, uh, without having to hang it over the edge of the bench or something like that. Um, and each side has got a couple of wheels in it, some very thin pins, very low friction, um, and you put a spindle on here, making sure it's level, put your prop in, and because it is such low friction, any small mismatch in weight on either side will actually cause it to rotate. Um, worth its weight in gold. Okay, so let's move on and see how I tackle this problem. So, let's get started. So, by the way, I've already checked that this this is level, um, and that there is no balance issues with any of the fixings on here. It's one of the things I check when I first get the uh, the prop balance up. So when it's fixed on there. Make sure it's nice and nice and secure on there. That's all looking good. So. This is my process I go through. It looks like it's a little bit heavy down on this blade here. Um, one of the things I always do is only remove material from the underside not from the top side and keep away from the edges. No. Just do a little bit at a time. I'm trying to do this evenly across the underside of the blade. Balances that way, and it balances that way. So on the face, of it all looks good. I tend to just turn it over as well, just to make sure. Yeah, a little bit of inconsistency there. So on the face, of it that looks like it's pretty balanced, but. What happens when we put it vertical? It starts rolling round for no good reason. And on moulded props, that's down to inconsistencies in the hub. But these don't have a hub, and it will cause vibration, which will get picked up in your camera through the gimbal. This side of the centre line of where the shaft is. again <clears throat> a little bit heavy on that side I'll take a little bit more here. Good, check it the other way around. Yep, 
Oh, so it looks okay. Let's try the vertical balance. We'll just try it at that angle. See if we get to. It's actually looking quite good. This is a slightly one of the easier ones I've done. A little bit heavy still. I think what I'm going to do is sometimes there's an inconsistency across here so a, I think there's a small weight difference on that side to this side so just taking a bit of material off here um, won't affect the horizontal balance that way but it will affect, it means this side's heavier on this material here it's pulling it around that way I mean this is, this is taking it to uh, very fine level let's get out just trying to take a bit of material off here not too much Nicely seated. Check the horizontal balance. Let's do it around that way. Looking okay. Looking okay. Let's try vertical. So this is this mid side. I take the material off. That's looking pretty good now. Let's try it that way. That's looking good. Just a quick double check. Always round. Don't try to take too much material off because you'll end up taking it off one side and then off the other side. This is even good now, so that seems pretty good. Let's take that off. Um, what I like to do, just to make sure there's no rough edges, just a little bit of very fine steel wool, wire wool, whatever you want to call it. Take any roughness off there. So we good. Um, what I like to do is just to finish off, just get some. This is just a spray beeswax polish. Get the last of the resin. Off there. there we go. On balance, prop ready to go. These are RC Timer 13 by five and a half, which are about the biggest that I can get onto the tower. I wanted to get some 14s, but they they're gonna they're gonna hit tip to tip. But these are pretty good. Okay, so 
that's another one done. Uh, got another five to go. So, I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Shoot me an email or post a comment below. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.